Hello there my beautiful angels and welcome back to the channel. I am so happy to have you back here today. I'm really excited for this video because I've actually been mentally planning this topic for probably the last year. I'm going to be talking about the lessons that I have learned along my spiritual journey and some mistakes that I made and some advice so you don't make the same mistakes that I made. <laughs> this is just going to be some tips and tricks for you so you can have a certain understanding of the things that you're going to learn along the way, at least the things that I have learned along the way. And if someone had told me clearly, hey, understand this, here's the cheat code, here's the blueprint, then maybe I wouldn't have made so much mistakes along the way. I wanted to give you some tips and tricks on what to look out for as you're progressing along your spiritual journey and your personal development journey. There's so many things that we learn along the way, but when we don't acknowledge it, sometimes we forget that we learned a lesson. This is why I personally keep track of all the lessons I learn. I write them down. I journal every single day. And that's something that I highly recommend you do because when we have thoughts in our brain, we don't always process it as much as we should. It kind of just sits in the storage of our brain. But when we put it out on paper, or we express it verbally, it helps so much to really see everything that's going on. And it takes that weight off your shoulders because you no longer have it jumbled in your brain. You poured it out on paper. It's been written. It's been documented. And that makes it so much easier for you to actually learn it and download it into your embodiment in your day-to-day -day practice, not just knowledge that you have versus actually embodying it and being a different person overall. Because there's a huge difference between logically knowing something and then being able to embody that energy and elevate your energy and have a change in your aura not just in your brain knowledge but in how you go about your actions and the energy that you bring into your relationships with other people whether that's friendships business relationships or romance so let's get right into this okay the first and i would probably say this is the most important lesson for you to learn is that you cannot take everybody with you when you have made the decision to level up when you have made the decision to go on a spiritual journey get in touch with god get in touch with the universe get in touch with your angels. When you have made this decision, you cannot expect everyone else is going to do this as well. You have to allow the people around you to move at their own pace. Don't get too attached to the people that are currently in your life. Because when you personally change, your environment also changes. So don't get too attached to where you're living right now. You may need to move across the country. You may need to move to a whole nother country. Don't get too attached to the people that you are hanging out with and the friends that you have. Chances are a year from now, you will have completely changed your friend group and not even be able to resonate with the fact that you used to hang out with those people in the past. Don't get too attached to your career and your job because chances are as you get in touch with your soul, as you get in touch with God and the energy of the universe, 
you are going to really open up to finding your purpose. And it's really common that your purpose is probably not the career that you're currently in. This doesn't mean you have to completely leave. Your purpose can be something you do as a hobby, but I guarantee you, you will want to pursue it full time. You will no longer want to entertain working at a job that isn't aligned with your purpose. So it's all up to you. Nothing is going to happen against your will. You can only level up. You can only quantum leap with your own permission. If you are scared of what will happen and you close yourself off to it, it's not going to happen against your will. Understand that whatever happens and whatever changes you make, they are going to be for your benefit. Once you have embarked on a spiritual journey, everything that happens is for your benefit. Even if in the moment it seems like something unwanted, you will realize it happened for a reason and you are better off today than you were before that situation. Not every step of your journey is going to be pretty. Don't try to associate good, bad, happy, sad, negative situation, positive situation. Take everything for what it is and try not to judge things that happen too much. Things are going to happen that may seem like you are failing or it may seem like what you're doing is not working, but it is working. Once you've set the intention to level up and manifest your dream life, everything is going to align for you. But you're going to have to shed some things, make some changes, transform different areas of your life, and that may not always look very pretty. It will often be very uncomfortable for you because when your mind is having something happen consistently and then you make a change, your mind wants to keep you safe. So you may feel very uncomfortable. You may get a lot of low vibe emotions coming up and triggering you because your brain can't see the possibility of the new amazing manifestation of the new quantum leap your brain can't see that your brain can only sense oh my god something's changing i'm scared i need to protect her stop stop this progress you have to understand what's happening and thank yourself thank your brain because this is a survival mechanism intended to keep you safe. So acknowledge the fact that you appreciate your brain and your mind for trying to keep you safe, but you want to change and you want something different and you rather be uncomfortable and change something then continue to stay comfortable in a situation that isn't fulfilling you and it's not what you want for yourself. There are some areas of your life that you want to improve. And in order to do something differently and have something differently, we have to be someone different. We can't do things and have things that don't align with the person we are being. So when I say that everyone is capable of making their own decisions, that is because not everyone has aspirations like you do. Not everyone is ambitious. Not everyone wants to level up. Some people are perfectly content where they are and they have other issues that they need to work through before they can start on their spiritual journey and on their personal development journey. Don't judge them. Let them be. Accept them for who they are. 
don't try to drag them along with you against their will. You don't need to keep everyone in your life. Love everybody, accept everybody, but that doesn't mean you need to have everybody in your life, in your close inner circle. Be very selective with who you spend your time. Be very selective with how you are spending your time. Look at your time as money. You don't want to waste your time on things that you don't need and things that you don't want. You want to invest your money into things that will benefit you in some way and you want to invest your money so it makes more money. Maybe you invest in the stock market, maybe you invest in real estate. Whatever investments you make with your money, the purpose is I want to multiply this money. So with your time and with your energy, think about it like you're either investing it or you're wasting it. This can look different for a lot of people because what may be an investment for me may be a waste of time for you. For example, I love creating content. I am a content creator. Before I was making YouTube videos, I was posting on Instagram, I was posting on TikTok, I was doing brand collaborations. It was always a hobby of mine, even before I ever saw the opportunity to actually make money from it. It's something that I enjoy. So I genuinely like to learn ways of how I can get better. I'm constantly watching other successful creators and taking mental notes on how they're doing things. I'm constantly doing research to see the newest updates and different tactics and methods I can use. And I'm constantly playing around on my computer and my phone with all these different forms of content trying to create art. So that within itself brings me joy and of course I make money from it. That is a good investment of my time. Now let's say you make candles. You are starting your candle business. You love making candles. You find joy in it. You're not very much a social media person, but you acknowledge the fact that in this day and age, it can be very beneficial to have an online brand. So instead of spending your day making candles, you decide to spend your day researching social media, setting up online brand, trying to figure out how to run ads on Google. Now, on the surface, this seems like a good investment because you are trying to make your business successful, but you do not enjoy this. You don't like social media. It is not your passion. The time that you spent on social media could have been time invested in making candles and getting better at making candles. So doing all of this research and spending so much time on learning social media and posting on social media, that is, that is a waste of your time. So the same activity can be considered an investment for one person and then a complete waste of time for someone else. As you go along your journey, you will figure out more and more what is aligned for you and what is not aligned for you. Another way of wasting time are doing things that you don't enjoy. This comes into play when we have these optional events, like someone invites us to brunch or a friend invites us to go clubbing or we get invited to a dinner or a family event or some sort of social thing or optional thing that doesn't necessarily have to do with our work and our life purpose, but it's more for fun. So if this is an optional event and you aren't genuinely excited to attend, don't go. Attending an event simply to be nice and please the person that invited you, that is a waste of your time. Attending an event that you are genuinely excited about and you can't stop thinking about it because you know it's going to be so much fun for you, 
that is an investment of your time. Maybe it's not doing anything for your business, but it's doing something for your heart and soul because you're having fun, you're feeling good, and these activities help raise our vibration. But when we go to an event because we wanna please the person that invited us, or because we feel bad for saying no, or we feel bad for canceling, or we don't know if we'll get an opportunity like this again, so we just wanna say yes, fear of missing out, FOMO, <laughs> that is a complete waste of time. And that will lower your vibration because when you go there, you will be resentful for having to attend because you didn't want to go in the first place. So you set these high standards. And of course, when you go there, you're going to say, oh, this sucks. Why did I come? Have you ever said that before? Have you ever gone to an event that you didn't really want to go to, but you were trying to be nice? And then you get there and you're like, okay, when can I leave? This sucks. It's not even fun. Like I shouldn't have come. You're right. You shouldn't have come, but it's not because the event sucks. It's about the fact that you didn't honor your desires. You ignored your intuition and you forced yourself to attend something you didn't want to attend. And now you feel stupid. It happens move on let it go and make the decision to not do this to yourself invest your time in the things that you love in the things that you're passionate about in the things that are fun don't waste your time out of obligation don't waste your time because you feel bad saying no invest your time be very mindful of where you are putting your time and energy. You are going to have a whole new level of awareness when it comes to energy and friendships and the people around you. People are at different levels of vibration. The people that are stuck in victim mindset, the people that have a fixed mindset, aren't focused on personal development, or leveling up in any way, they are on the lower end of the vibrational scale. The only thing you can do is to spend your time and energy around people that are on your vibrational level. People that are chasing after their dreams. People that have high expectations for themselves. People that are kind and loving and genuine. People that genuinely want to see you win. You will be able to tell from a gut feeling who is genuine and who genuinely loves you and supports you from a place of growth. You know that Drake song where he's like, demon time. Well, this is like God time. <laughs> you will be able to feel in someone's energy who is living in a stagnant, sedimentary, rock-like existence and, and who is living in their flow, like the air, like the water, like sunlight. Sunlight just goes everywhere. Air just flows everywhere. A rock is going to stay where it stays unless someone literally picks it up and takes it somewhere else. And the heavier the rock is, the harder it is to move. <laughs> it may not always be clear by someone's words what their energy is because they may be saying all the right things. They may be saying all the places they want to go and all the things they want to accomplish, but their actions and their energy doesn't align with that. It's so common to get to know someone and get a vibe right off the bat that they're kind of shady or there's something off about them, but you ignore that feeling and you try to be their friend or you try to be their romantic partner or a business partner. And then as you get to know them, you start to really see their character and then you feel kind of shitty for even being friends with them in the first place because you got that gut feeling. So that gut feeling 
was an exchange of energy. Because even when someone lies to you and smiles at you and shows you with their hands and their face expressions and their body expressions and their words that they really like you, I'm going to give you a little example. And you can do this by looking at yourself in the mirror doing it. It's crazy. I'm going to tell you the same thing two times. The first time, I'm going to be thinking something negative, And the second time, I'm going to be thinking something positive. You're the best. You're the best. You can tell because I can tell just from saying that totally different. In the first one, I imagine the face of somebody that I have not had a good experience with and I don't really like them. (laughs) So even though I genuinely tried to pretend and say you're the best, like I couldn't fake it. And with the second one, I was thinking of someone that I genuinely appreciate and love. And of course you could just tell, even though I didn't change my tone very much, you could just see it in like, my eyes, in my mouth, in my energy, that something was different. I want you to be hyper aware of this when you're meeting people and talking to people. Don't pay attention so much as to what they're saying. Pay attention to what their facial expressions are really showing and how you felt with it. Feel it in your heart how you react to their energy. And that will tell you all you need to know. And it'll tell you exactly who you should spend your time with and who you shouldn't spend your time with. Another super important thing that I've learned so far is to let go of any resentments. You have to forgive so you can live. You can't be holding on to things that you are angry at other people or upset at other people for doing something to you. The longer you hold on to this, the more it weighs down on you and blocks you from truly making progress in your life. Energetically, this also holds back the other person from being able to apologize truly or being able to learn from their own behavior. When I was going through that process of doing the journaling, doing the therapy, doing all the inner work to release that baggage, you have no idea how many people from my past were reaching out to me. Literally out of nowhere, friends from my past who did something to me that I didn't appreciate and I had been holding that grudge, I finally released it. I let it go. They reached out to me randomly. Hi, how are you? I just wanted to check in and apologize. I know I wasn't a good friend to you. I really appreciate your friendship and I hope that we can be friends again. Something like that. Obviously not exactly those words, but several people from my past reached out to me literally just to apologize and ask to be in my life again. That was insane for me because it really goes to show that other people feel your energy towards them. Even if I didn't tell them, hey, I'm angry at you because you did this, I didn't have to. My energy said it all. They felt that. And when I let it go, when I released it and I forgave them, they were able to feel that energetic shift and then actually take accountability for what they did. Instead of being in like this energetic defensive mode, trying to block my negative energy, I had no more negative energy left. I let it go. So they were able to really then reflect and all of a sudden, coincidentally, reach out to me to apologize. This was a beautiful situation for me because I had already forgiven them, but it's obviously a good feeling when someone has apologized to you genuinely for something that they've done. It's so common that when we're going through our spiritual journey, people from our past will reach out to us. This is a sign that what you're doing is working, 
but that does not mean you have to accept anybody back into your life. This one friend actually comes to my mind right now because she was someone that I had known from high school and we drifted apart, it wasn't really aligned, then we reconnected and I felt like maybe there could be potential there because we'd both changed so much yet it almost seemed like in this moment we have a lot in common. We're both on this personal development journey, we're both on this spiritual journey, we both want to level up. We had a lot in common at that time and so for me I thought that was a signal of okay amazing like this person is meant to be in my life now we're on the same page this is great and we were very close for a few months and then we just kind of drifted apart again it's normal to want to reconnect with people from your past and feel like wow they've changed i've changed maybe now this time it can work 99 percent of the time the same exact pattern will repeat itself and it's okay to have someone in your life for a short period of time because maybe they're here to teach you a lesson. Maybe there's something that they will do that will then inspire you to do something even better or put you in a situation where you meet someone that you need to meet. There can be a lot of benefits from this, but you must acknowledge and understand that not everyone you meet is going to be in your life forever and that's okay. As I said before, there's no need to cling on to things so tightly because what is meant for us will come to us. If something is really meant for you and you say, no, I don't want it, you think it's just going to give up? You think that thing is going to try to come into your life one time and then give up because you said no? No. If something is meant to be in your life, it's not going to leave you alone. So you can say no as much as you want, but at the end of the day, it's gonna happen, sweetie. It's not gonna take no for an answer. It's gonna keep persisting until it can be in your life because that's what it's meant to be. So don't stress so much about giving everyone and everything a new chance and seeing how it goes and giving people the benefit of the doubt, don't worry about that too much. Because if someone is really meant to be in your life, the universe will find a way. The universe, God, your angels, spirit guides, energy, vibration, will find a way. It'll make it happen. <laughs> right place at the right time, two, two, two. <laughs> So all in all, everything's working out for you. Everything's gonna happen in your favor. Things may look kind of crazy sometimes, but just have faith because it's all working out for you. If you're coming from a place of good intentions and you actively put in the effort to raise your vibration and be a good person and be genuine with who you are and own your desires, trust your intuition, you're going to end up winning. You may have little ups and downs, but at the end of the day, you're gonna win. <laughs> I wanna finish this off with uh, one of my favorite affirmations, and that is, I don't chase, I attract. What belongs to me will simply find me. I don't chase, I attract. What belongs to me will simply find me. I don't chase. I attract. What belongs to me will find me. <laughs> I had to say it three times because I want you to remember this. Repeat it all day, every day if you need to, but it's true. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video, okay? Love you. Bye. Mwah.